everybody. Welcome back to this episode of This is Bipolar. Today we are going to talk about um, mental health and mental illness and how it's portrayed in the media. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of buzz going around right now and a lot of people are talking about it. Um, because of a couple weeks ago when the Britney Spears um, documentary came out. And we have been talking about this in the it, of things in the media for a very long time, but we thought this would be a really good time because people are open to talking about it because people's hearts have been softened mostly um, about these things. So I think to start off, we, we would really, really love to um, talk about that. I think our greatest hope is that um, you would be able to see um, our, see representation and, and demand representation and look for representation of the entire spectrum of different uh, mental health disorders. Many of the ones we're going to be talking to today um, are about bipolar because if you don't know already Julie and I have both have bipolar 2 disorder and there is we know now there's an entire spectrum of mood disorders and so I think that we really want to break down um, basically the one way at this point mostly that uh, media portrays people that live with the disorder so mm -hmm. Julie I would love for you to talk about one of the one of the big ones that really impacted you, probably maybe back when you were first diagnosed or a couple of years after? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I was diagnosed in the spring of 2010. Um, a range of emotions to my diagnosis. I was, you know, shocked, ashamed. I was convinced I would need to hide it for the rest of my life. And I now look back and I know that a huge Part of that was because of the image of bipolar disorder that I had seen in the media portrayed, you know, whether it be with celebrities, um, whether it be in movies, um, even in music. And so I think this is why I'm so passionate about this topic. But um, in the spring of 2011, there was an interview done with a celebrity, Charlie Sheen. Mm -hmm. And I think that had the biggest impact on me in a negative way. And so um, for anyone that hasn't seen the interview, I thought about sharing clips and I, I don't even want to, you know, give more attention to the actual clips because in my mind, and this is my opinion, it was very clear to anyone interviewing him, anyone, you know, recording the interview that he was clearly not in the best state of mind. And so, um, of course, the interview aired. Um, I actually have a little sample of what was said right before it aired. And to me, this is just a huge red flag that you would even need to introduce an interview with someone in this way. But what they said was, at the end of our shooting, we wondered, as you no doubt will, what did we just witness and what will happen next to Charlie Sheen and his family? And what was aired next was just the most random interview um, in which he used the terms by winning and tiger blood. And I just remember as someone that had been diagnosed a year earlier, someone that was still not sharing my diagnosis with many people in my life, only close friends and family, that pretty much sealed the deal that I did believe that if I did ever come forward with bipolar disorder, that I would be viewed in that way. Um, yeah. And I'll never forget it. And so even to this day, um, a Google search under that will bring up memes. It will bring up songs that mock him. And I just think if the media had maybe taken a few seconds to step back and say, you know what, it's clear that this individual might need some help, that they are not in a great healthy state of mind to be giving this interview. If they had taken, you know, maybe more responsibility and not aired that interview. Those memes and those songs that we see even to this day, you know, 10 years later, um, they would not exist. And I think about the impact that that would have on other people as well, that in their mind, they would think, you know, the minute they would come forward and disclose a bipolar diagnosis that they would immediately be lumped into the same category as that. And as Shaley mentioned, the spectrum for all disorders especially bipolar disorder. Um, you know, there are different types of bipolar disorder and, you know, the range is very vast. And I think oftentimes the media loves 
to portray those more extreme cases. They yeah. love to splash it on the headline, you know, story of the newspaper or the news, because it's almost as if, yes, it's like a train wreck. We can't look, but we can't look away. And I think, unfortunately, as a society, oftentimes we're more interested in someone else's, you know, pain or someone else's uh, train wreck. So unfortunately, I think, you know, and I'll use this term in, I hope everyone takes it in the right way, but you know, crazy sells. And so, you know, even, even last week on Instagram, I saw someone share a meme, um, person, how are you mentally? Me, somewhere between a toddler breakdown and a full out Charlie Sheen. And I can't help but think if that interview was never aired, this meme would not exist. And, you know, I can't, I can't even help but think of the people that would have maybe come forward. Uh, it took me four years to come forward. And I'm going to say right here and now that a huge part of that was that interview. So that's just one example of how um, the way the media has portrayed mental illness or published it or put it out in the forefront. That's how it has personally affected me. So yeah. I will quit rambling on that, but um, yeah, it definitely has had a profound effect. And, you know, thinking back, I just mostly yeah. just makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, we're using uh, some terminology that's already been used, like, for example, train wreck or things like that. What we're referring to is the, um, the extreme, yeah. extreme cases, right? Um, for those of us that deal with bipolar um, and other disorders, there is something called psychosis. Mm -hmm. And it's when you get so far from reality and it's considered a specific episode. And that's, you know, understanding that is near and dear to my heart because the night that I went to emergency, not doing well at all and feeling like, you know, I, li I literally didn't know if I would um, be able to contain all my feelings and physical um, uh, symptoms anymore. And I thought that I would perish. I really did. And when I went and um, was evaluated and did all the things, um, I read my file later. I don't, uh, I think I've mentioned it in another episode that I like afterwards, I wanted to make sure I had the diagnosis. So I demanded my file. <laughs> it's like so much that I wish I didn't have it. Um, but in there, um, they had said that I probably was very close to, like it said, she's not in psychosis, but literally I think they may have told my husband that I was probably like a couple days away and it's much harder to get out of that and get that under control. And so I think that we see um, this in the media a lot. And yeah, like for that uh, example that you gave, so clearly these things are recorded ahead of time. So there's thought put into that. If we put the person first over entertainment, yeah. they could have looked into other people or have even have a doctor come in and explain maybe why this was going on, just to give people a, a, a better understanding. And I think um, even though we know that there's a spectrum, the representation in media is always uh, people at their absolute worst. Yeah. Right. Because we're not denying that there are these episodes. We're not denying that uh, people go into psychosis and that people do unpredictable things and that, you know, most stereotypes are built on something. So, yes, of course, those things can happen. But if you actually looked into statistics, which I have once, but I'm not mathy, so I don't remember, um, it, it, more of us that live with bipolar disorder are kind of in here. Yeah. yeah. Right. But that's all we see. In fact, 90% of people that I talked to didn't know that there's a bipolar one and a bipolar two and which one is severe in which area and such. And so, like you said, it makes it so hard um, to come forward. And I think, yeah, one of the things we want to kind of deconstruct in the media is just how, um, yeah, how we don't treat 
um, celebrities and, and people that are out there with the same care and respect that we would a uh, friend, a family, or someone we knew. And that brings us to the Britney Spears documentary. Yeah. I just want to, I think Julie already did, but because of uh, my anxiety and covering all the bases, this is our opinion. Yeah. This is, we are seen through our lens only. We also realize that this is a documentary not put out by the Spears family or Brittany at all, or we haven't, we don't know any of the people that we're talking about. It's only our commentary on what we've seen and how it's made us feel. So it's yeah. our, our story with interacting with, with the media. So we're not experts, like hundred percent not experts. What we are is lived experience um, from, yeah. our, uh, from our own disorders. So yeah. I would love to hear, um, you know, some of your, your reactions. I tried to look it up and I know it's thrown around out there, but I couldn't find something that said specifically yeah. that Brittany had a mental health diagnosis of bipolar disorder, but that's kind of the general yeah. um, what's out there in the world. So we will probably refer to it as if she does. We don't know for sure. Yeah, we don't but know for sure. I would love to hear, you know, your initial reactions, the things that stuck out for you. And then, um, yeah, I can tell you a few of mine. I think my overall reaction was just... Um empathy for her, compassion for her. Um, I can't even imagine what it's like to grow up, you know, from such a young age um, with the pressure of fame and fortune and being a star. But I think what really struck me was that period after she had been uh, married and had her children and it was clear that things uh, were, I don't know, can we say a little off with her? She was struggling. And so whether that was with an official diagnosis, but I just, what struck me was um, the evening the paparazzi was following her and just there was a cameraman that came on and um, he basically just said, you know, I was after the shot. I wasn't concerned with her mental well-being, even though I think they followed them around to a gas station. At one point, her cousin in the car, you know, pleaded with them like she we are not having a good night tonight. She is not in a good place. Could you please give us uh, our privacy? And of course, you know, that was just unheard of because I think the media demands and, you know, to some extent we demand as people that buy the magazines and the glossies as they're called in the UK, um, you know, we want to see those pictures. And so of course, I think that evening she, um, lost control and I think damaged his car, but that is the shot that went around the world. And I think unfortunately that is the image that a lot of people still have in their minds of Britney Spears, even though it was in 2008. And I think it's so important. Um, if, if, if each of us in our worst moments had a photo taken and then plastered and sent around the world, you know, how would we feel? And there are so many moments in my bipolar journey that I am not proud of. Um, I would call them my lows. And, you know, thank goodness, those are just little blips out of, do I want to out myself? <laughs> out of, you know, over four decades of my life. And I think it's so easy when you're someone that's in the public eye, unfortunately, that you know, becomes that defining moment. And I was driving my daughter to school the other day and the radio DJ came on. They were talking about the Super Bowl and who they would want as the musical halftime show guest. And the DJ came on and said, I would want the healthy Britney Spears, not the mental case Britney Spears that we see right now. I can't even describe how angry that made me that Oh, I, I, I will get my thoughts out, but I mean, I, I yeah. pulled the car over, I know the radio show and I have the DJ's Instagram and I think there's a message I need to write because I just think as a radio DJ with thousands of listeners in that moment of calling Brittany a mental case, I just think, you know, the one in five, the one in four people that struggle, how many of his listeners at that moment heard him speak so derogatory about Britney Spears and how many people in that moment thinking of coming forward or getting help, the impact of his words and the power and just, I don't even know if he realized what he had said or how he had said it or the impact that it could have. So back to Britney, I think, um, yeah, just 
just, I think I really feel for her and I, you know, I wish the best for her. And I think the documentary or the clips that were shown um, really shed insight into her life and what was going on behind the scenes. And it was such an important reminder to look at the big picture yeah. and not just look at a picture and just realize what was going on and that we're all human and we all have feelings and struggles. And I would hope that we show grace and compassion for people and not reduce what we think of them, you know, to that one moment in their life um, that was maybe one of their lows. So that's my take. And anyone I've talked to about it, they've kind of come away with the same, like, wow, I had no idea, or I, I really feel for her. So I think in that respect, I'm yeah. glad I watched it. What I'm is glad. the other side of a story we presented, especially now with social media, we present, um, you know, a certain story, but that's not the full story. And if we're not yeah. looking like, look how many people have compassion now, like yeah. what is it, 11, 12, I don't know. Remember, I told you I'm not good at math. Years yeah. later. Um, yeah, what stuck out for you? What stuck out for yeah. you? Like if so I actually, um, I remember even back then really actually relating and thinking, not thinking that makes sense, but not thinking it was as shocking, um, you know, when she shaved her head yeah. and, and that and that kind of thing. Because you think about what's going, all the pressure already. And if you're someone with that, we don't know for sure, but that is born with sensitivities or has different, um, you know, neurological things going on, um, that might make someone have, you know, a breakdown that doesn't even lean towards uh, mental health disorder, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And I, and to think about the pressure and I was thinking about the shaving head thing. And I was thinking about um, when I get really anxious or depressed or feel one of the things when I'm anxious is I feel like I'm so overwhelmed that other people's expectations on top of how I'm overwhelmed, like just, it's too much. And uh, uh, some of my anxiety comes out in anger. And I just sometimes want to do the opposite of what they expect, because I feel like I can't live up to the expectation, right. And so I remember thinking, you know, with her looks, and how many people and we saw in the interviews, comment on it and expect and want, you know, this sexiness out of her, but yeah. then a whole nother people just judge it. And uh, that one part in the interview where, the woman interviewing her says, you know, this person says that you're a detriment to her children and she wishes you were dead or something like that. And I'm like, what in the actual? And yeah. so I actually related to the thing because when I'm feeling like that, it's like this rev engine, like you want to do something. And yeah. maybe that was her something. Maybe that was taking back her power or yeah. control or whatever. It it isn't, we weren't in her head. We didn't know. So I, uh, you know, I was thinking that. And I was also thinking like, man, if, like you said, if someone recorded the night that I went to help and that is all they ever knew about me. Yeah. There would be Shaley memes. Yeah. There would be a hundred percent Shaley memes. Yeah. Right. And yeah. people wouldn't know, um, you know, my, my whole story. So I think you talked a little bit about how, you know, it, I think in the media, I think there needs to be, you know, a more human response. We need to have, yeah. um, you know, things put in place that we put people's humanity before we do, you know, entertainment. And I think as well, those media uh, movies, TV, music, whatever, wouldn't have access to so many people if we weren't listening. Yeah. So it's a big problem, but it's also an individual problem. Yeah. So yeah. I was thinking about things, um, you know, that I've probably said or made fun of um, with Brittany. And I think the one other thing that hit me is when they were talking about how people talked about her. Yeah. And it was, I don't know if it was, it was one of the, it was a family game yeah. or whatever. And there was what category. Shocking. What did Brittany lose? And one of them was like her mind and like her, her sanity and like all these different things. And I'm like, this is a family TV show. Yeah, how is that acceptable to make out of someone's deepest pain entertainment? It just, yeah, I was, I didn't catch that ep episode when it aired, but I think I would have sat there and said, like, is this even allowed? Is this like, where are people's sense of humanity? 
So, I mean, I will say, I know more recently, um, Kanye West yes. has come forward. Uh, we know he has bipolar disorder and I know, I think it was last summer, he had, you know, made some public statements and I, I thought it was really telling that his wife at the time um, came forward on Instagram with a statement basically explaining that he did have a mental health issue, um, asking for compassion and empathy and sort of explaining this is really painful for our family. And I thought, I read that and I was just, wow, I just thought for, for her millions of followers to read that and hopefully just realize that behind that is, you know, a man and a wife and children and a family and I think we're headed in the right direction, but I was going to ask you, when you were first diagnosed, um, do you think there were any movies that you had seen or any images in the media that affected how you accepted your diagnosis or how willing you were to come forward? Like, were those stumbling blocks? Do you think the media played yeah. a role? Yeah, and even to now, can can you re-ask me that question in a minute? I just yeah. want to circle back to Kanye because that mm -hmm. one's really affected me. Um, I, think, I think it's really... Um, easy to write somebody off when um when they're in in different episodes right and especially um you know connie has said over and over in interviews that you know medication takes away your creativity and uh, and that kind of thing and i can agree to that too if i can see like sometimes i miss parts of of my hypomania which in my pool bipolar it just means a um a bit of more muted um version of of bipolar but but with bipolar one you have grandiose um uh ideas and you don't um see things as they really are and one of the biggest things and that's with the charlie sheen thing as well it's actually completely the mental health disorder and maybe there's ego and other things going on but this is like a well-known symptom right but we it's hard for us to see that when someone's telling you like they're the king of the world or stealing the microphone from taylor and telling her you know that she's not good enough and i think that um yeah i just sometimes i watch it and i'm like just don't oh don't you know because i feel like you're representing yeah. um you know that right now and that's what what people are going to see but that also brings up a, a good point in that um i don't know if you've ever felt like this but when i was first diagnosed and even now i feel like i have to put my best foot forward or i have to um really represent and i think yeah. that that's a comment on society like no one person should have to represent something so vast right like i don't need to be the uh, you know, the face of bipolar. So all my things that everything that I do reflects onto that, right? So we see Kanye West, we see Charlie Sheen, we see Britney Spears, they, people say they have bipolar and we only see them at, you know, in this one instance or two or three or at their worst. Yeah. And then we slap that label onto every person that's ever had that diagnosis. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly uh, add in it. It's even affected when I am speaking right down to what I wear. Because, oh, 100%. Of, because of, I just thought, even though I want to wear the most colorful, creative thing in my closet, I figure, no, I need to almost overcompensate and wear, you know, the most business-like, calm, normal, put together, in control, like everything. Yeah. And that is why, where normally I would want to show up and just, you know, over the top, but I thought, nope because of the media and the image that most people have, I have to almost go way further the other way. And I hope I get to the point where I don't even think about it and I wear whatever I feel like wearing. Yeah. I'm getting there, but yeah. definitely, I mean, so to think that it's affected right down to what I wear and that I'm not wearing what I really want to wear because I'm so affected by that. So. And for our listeners that you can't see, but Julie did quotation marks around normal. We're not. <laughs> yes, yes. No, we, there is no no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We I, we always forget that there's right. Yes, because we do the video as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, exactly. I remember. I even. I think I was telling Julie. I even did um, 
interview recently and I was the only one with lived experience and others were therapists or people that were um, talking about um, mental health from like a expert, um, which I also just did in quotation marks because what makes <laughs> an expert, right? But mine was living experience in that I don't have education and uh, psychology background. Um, and I remember uh, telling Julie and telling my friends like, I was so into what people were saying. I was like silent cheering in my face or whatever. And afterwards I got off and I was like, oh, <laughs> I look, probably looked like the crazy one or the more energetic one or da, 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 and I'm the only one on the panel representing a mental health disorder. And then I'm, one of my friends said to me, um, no, that's engaging and endearing. And w wouldn't you want to watch that? Like you're not representing that, but even that that's a yeah. thought process, it, it just shows that we have such, it, it's so embedded in our society that we have internal stigma, yeah. right? Like here I am, smasher of stigma, but then I'm stigmatizing myself. Yeah, I think it's so interesting. See, I do the colorful and do the big earrings and do the thing because I, my thought process is, but I, but I have to like have makeup on and hair, you know, but my thought process is I want to show them that I'm colorful, but then I'm very aware of like, I try and be like how fast I'm going to talk and this and that and try and not hit the stereotype. So I can see how you didn't want to hit the stereotype of being, you know, uh, uh, gregarious and yeah, uh, but at the, at the same time, if anyone that really knew me saw me show up, they'd be like, "Where's Julie?" And who's that <laughs> business woman? <laughs> yeah. So and what? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I was thinking this. You really brought up uh, talking about the clothes. Brought up a really good point in my head. So I need to tell you. So <laughs> it. I think that we're both coming from a perspective of a woman, and I think in the media, and we know in. The, the world were, you know, taught to be, we're told we are more emotional and more this and more that. And I think the business attire or trying to, depending on what situation I'm going into, I know women do that just to be taken more seriously in business yeah. and workplace everywhere. Um, and then with the added mental health disorder, right? We're all, we're trying to prove that we're, you know, have a place in the room in business in, in things like that. And so there's still so much stigma and these, this is in movies, right? Like yeah. they, the women that, um, you know, have, have a breakdown, a man that has a breakdown, especially because we know there's an added stigma, um, yeah. you know, lose jobs, lose this instead of just like, oh, they needed a mental health day. And then, you know, and we say that, and we are trying to do that as society and companies, are, you know, are supposed to, but really when you, if you really did it, like if you really took that time, um, it's internalized and a lot of people are still treated yeah. like there's something wrong with them or they won't take it because of the stigma, even though we say, you know, look how far we've come. Yeah. Or they'll say they have a dentist appointment far more often than if they have a psychiatrist or a counseling appointment. And, oh, I think we're getting there. Um, how do you what think? Was the question? What was the question? Oh, the question was just, do you have any examples of movies or anything that you oh, think yes. really affected you or really stuck out in your mind and made a difference in how you yeah. viewed your disorder or how you viewed coming out with your disorder? So for me, it was definitely that Charlie Sheen interview, but I don't know if there have been movies or shows or just images. Yeah, yeah. so I think it's been a bit of a progression. So um, I know uh, one of the things that we've talked about right now with the Charlie Sheen and, and that kind of thing is representation and this representation of someone when they are like in psychosis or not doing well, um, we either have that or we're kind of, we do the cute and quirky. It's kind of in yeah. right now to talk about mental health and stuff, but we look at the cute and quirky and we don't or the total mess yeah right or what people would consider that episode but yeah not like the in-between and I think like I used to love and really relate to movies like Mad Love or Girl Interrupted where though you know they I guess they're not kind of in the same category but those are the type of movies I was watching but Mad Love or there's even a I'll try and find it and put it in the show notes, but a movie we watched recently where, you know, she's date, oh, I think it's called All the Bright Places. Anyways, she's dating someone and he's like so much fun and this and that, but then like goes off the radar when he when he's depressed and, and, and those kind of things. So I think we show one or the other, either it's quirky and cute 
or they immediately end up in some kind of, you know, psychiatric facility and yeah. then showing all of that. So maybe we could talk about a few of those. And then I know we both yeah. are excited to get to talking about modern love because yes. we actually want to talk about some things that have been represented well. Yeah. In the meantime, I know we've talked a lot about how um, before, how it, you know, bipolar is usually the criminal or usually, um, you know, the person that uh, that people are afraid of, or, you know, are are, uh, like, I don't, I'm trying to think of a different word. Dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. Not excommunicated, but pushed to the edges, right? Like they're, they're, they're out there. This is the regular cast and then there there's well, even right down to psychiatric facilities uh exactly. until meeting other people that had actually been to different types and learning about their experiences the only image in my mind is from one floor over the cuckoo's nest with jack nicholson and and right. their facility and how you know so thank goodness i've connected and heard other people's stories and found out that there is a vast array of experiences and you know some are quite pleasant and beautiful and healing and so I think I think we're moving in the right direction though you had mentioned like there are some some newer shows coming out uh, newer characters that I think are giving a better representation or at least a new or different or more relatable for anyone that doesn't have a mental health issue or have bipolar disorder um I don't know if you want to jump to those yet or if I skipped it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, I'd just like to comment on like the psychiatric unit. It's yeah. always shown as um, really, really terrible. And I'm not denying yeah. that there that is probably out there, but um, I guess that's more uh, interesting, quotation marks again. Um, but there's a, a bunch of places in between, right? Yeah. And if we say as a society, if we care, about this then why isn't there more of the in-between why did I even though I knew I didn't I knew that I needed help but I knew I wasn't a danger to myself or society or others why did I have to go to emergency why wasn't there something in between that I could reach out for for help and I remember my own doctor whom I love said when I actually asked we were trying to figure out because it was like depression but not depression I probably had so many diagnoses until we got the right one um had said looked at me right I like I think like I read about bipolar I'm not trying to be a google doctor but I hit all these marks right yeah. and I remember he looked right at me and he said like you wouldn't have finished your degree you wouldn't have um you know had children and been a good mom because he was a doctor he knew our family for a while you wouldn't have been able to you wouldn't have been able to you wouldn't have been able to he's in the mental community right which i understand because you can't be a specialist at everything but if like uh stereotypes run that deep right that put me back five years wow i've heard this i've heard this from other people too you know that yes, the thought of us being in healthy relationships or long-term marriages or being mothers is just unheard of. Yeah, and we get those messages all the time, don't we, Julie? Like, you know, yes. thank you for being out there. My, uh, you know, I remember one that really stuck my heart. Um, my daughter who was 19 was, uh, you know, diagnosed and she thinks her life is over. Like she yeah. thinks not yeah. to get married and, and do all these things and because there's no representation yeah and I of healthy and I think we we automatically or unknowingly just lower the bar lower the bar for every part of our life that we'll ever find someone that will ever get married that we could ever be a good mom and I I think that's part of the reason I was so passionate about coming forward. You know, you can say no to all of that. It's possible to have all of that. It's not always easy, but it's definitely possible. And, you know, the number of people out there, doctors, lawyers, all different types of people, artists, astronauts, you know, all the artists, so many artists. artists. Uh, It's possible. And I, yeah, I remember getting a message from someone and I think they were heading in and expecting a diagnosis. And then if the diagnosis came in, um, I think they were going to stop their schooling. And I, I just was like, no, if anything, your diagnosis is going to give you 
like that extra leg up, extra information. It'll help you manage life better. It's all good. Like it's all an answer and a reason and like, you know, just your next step because diagnosis or not, if you're struggling with a mental health, I mean, I knew I was struggling and then I had a diagnosis and a name, whatever that name had to be. And then I had a starting point for me to go, oh, I just was given a huge piece of the puzzle that I otherwise wouldn't have had. And now what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to take it, run with it, learn, embrace it, and just make this life, you know, as amazing as possible. And I know it's not a note too, is that um, we're both on medication, right? So, uh, and everybody has their baseline, right? Um, yeah. When Julie says run with it, she's talking about the things that sh- she knows that she can be good at within, right? Because it's all intertwined, your personality, yeah. your talents, yeah. your gifts, and bipolar. Um, uh, that might not be uh, the case for everyone. And yeah. if you're not getting the support, like we uh, appreciate everyone's choices. We yeah. just talk about medication because that is what worked for us. And that got us to a point where we could actually dig into our talents and gifts and uh, believe um, in ourselves. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think basically I'm just trying to mostly say if you have a diagnosis, just don't let that make you in any way think that that is going to have you lower the bar or going to hinder you from everything that life could have. So 100% positive. But yes, like you said, though, I think so often we just automatically think anyone with bipolar disorder could never stick to a marriage or stick to school or keep a job. And it's just, ah, we've got to yeah. say no to yeah. that. Push yeah. off. Well, we're very aware that there are periods and times where you can't and we are 100% take the time. You're 100% pro if you have to take long periods off work or you can't work. There's, we're talking to our, our experience, right? But yeah, the main message is like, it don't let it hold you back if you're stable. Obviously we know, like there were times in my lives where I couldn't tackle a bunch of my gifts and talents, especially right after when I was um, you know, moving toward wellness and getting the, the right medication and such. Yeah. 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 It's, um, yeah. And I think, I, I do think that it's okay to show both. Like Julie and I talk yeah. about a lot about trying to show, you know, um, where we're at in a positive uh, way and um, just seeing that, that you can live a, an average, if not exceptional life. But also I do think it is important to see, like if we're talking about representation, then we can't just have all um, stable um, people being shown. But I think that we need to be able to um, carefully show all sides because someone might be in the depths and the muck of it right now and be like, well, hip, hip, hooray for you two church cheery girls, right? Um, I, I might have been like that at different times, right? So we need the whole spectrum to yeah, sure and a, people understand, right? Yeah. And a balanced spectrum. And I think yes. when I was first diagnosed, there was just, it just seemed so heavily weighted to the yes. negative. And I was desperately searching yes. for any positive. So I think the scale is getting a little more even. And I really do think that some recent TV shows yes, and I think we guys are, show. are doing a fantastic, not perfect job, but I think I'm going to give them a C plus B there you go. <laughs> for where they're going. So I know there are two, yep. two shows that are fairly recent. Um, you have watched more of one than I have, but I have watched a very pivotal scene that made me cry. So I can speak to that a little bit later, but I'll just mention one series where the, one of the main characters, I don't know if she's the main character, but it's Homeland and the actress Claire Danes plays an actress named, or plays a character named Carrie who has bipolar disorder. And I haven't watched every episode, but what I have heard is that as an actress, Claire Danes actually took the time to do research and she said she actually watched YouTube videos 
of people living with bipolar, yes. the manic episodes to get a real sense of what it was like. And I thought, wow, for an actress to care enough and do the homework on her end, that's a huge, that's a huge, huge. amazing step. And I also know that the producers or directors took the time to actually consult with a mental health advocate who is also living with bipolar awesome. um, to get her advice on how the character should be portrayed. So I think, I think this is huge and it's showing that I think the media and TV is trying to get it right. They might not nail it all the time, but at least they're realizing the importance of being and the responsibility they have yeah. when they put a character out in the forefront that has a mental health issue. And I think they realize yeah. how influential that is and how you know that can be used for the good or the not so great. So that's yeah. Homeland, but then there's Modern Love and yeah. you've yeah. seen a lot more. So speak a bit to Modern Love. Yeah, I will. I definitely think that there is momentum and I love that you brought that up. And I love, um, just to add to that, that consulting someone with lived experience. Yes. We're yeah. so quick to consult and not that they, they can't give amazing examples, but we're quick to consult, you know, psychiatrists or people that have yeah. gone to school for this, but not act talking to an actual person. And not a lot of people are coming forward in an episode. Yeah. So if you're not talking, you know, that's awesome that she could find things on YouTube. Yeah. But generally, um, you know, a lot of people don't videotape them at their worst. Right. So to be able to, one, if there's no stigma, then we'll talk about it. And two, then people will learn and portray it, right? Yeah. And so I had probably, when it first came out, I probably had about five people message me online and friends just like have you seen this modern love episode with Anne Hathaway um have you seen it what's it called Julie you knew the exact title oh the one episode that really yeah. hit me hard um the episode is actually called take me as I am whoever I am beautiful right, me and stop right there <laughs> whole message um so in it it shows it portrays um bipolar and in my opinion it it's definitely showing bipolar one disorder um from what i know and for from what i've experienced because i could only relate to it in a certain way let me explain so <laughs> there's a scene where um where it's clearly trying to portray a manic episode and she gets dressed to the nines in color and she's in the grocery store and everything's vibrant and beautiful and then she like um you know flirts with a guy and ends up with a date but there's even a scene where it's like a musical like they're all dancing in the parking lot and it is beautiful and it's interesting because of how they wrapped it all together like if they just had that that would have been a stereo a big stereo type right that were just like ah big personalities which we can be yes. but it 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 showed it in a beautiful way and you just kind of fall like in love with her and you she brings you along this journey and then then she really connects with this guy and then they're gonna she's gonna make him dinner right she's in a good place and um she's making dinner everything's good she's dressed up it's it's all good and then you literally watch her go inside the, go to the washroom and like it just her depression just hit her out of nowhere mm -hmm. and you just watch her and just like just like to the bed you know it just everything went dark immediately and even she hears a knock on the door and as a person watching you're cheering like just show them who you are it's okay you know because she also it's been a while since I watched it she also like would avoid his call and then finally they got this together because she was having ups and downs and um she just couldn't she just couldn't and she had periods where she couldn't work and just to show that quick switch and that does happen with some people yeah. um i don't switch from as high to as low but i had seasonal switches for sure that were i mean it's bipolar that means opposite right there are opposite feelings and i just um I just thought that it showed it in a compassionate way mm -hmm. because it did cover a lot of stereotypes, but it, it's how you show it in, yeah. in, in a compassionate way. And we loved all of her in it. And then it's like the most crucial 
beautiful scene and I'm going to let Julie tell you about it because it has touched her as much as it has touched her. I cried. Shocker. Um, So the scene that I've seen, and I haven't seen the whole season, but this episode, the scene that resonated with me, I identified it with it in every way is um, the character of Anne Hathaway is with a coworker and she actually divulges that she has bipolar disorder and you can just I can feel every emotion that she has because I will admit even to this day um telling someone that I have bipolar disorder for the very first time there is still that (gasps) that fear that you know uh fear of being judged fear what are they going to think are they going to back away are they going to come closer and so she She basically just says, I want you to know what you're dealing with. Um, I have extreme highs and lows. I am not always the most reliable friend. I don't always pick up the phone. And I just watched it and said, you know, check, check, check. Like that's, that's me to a T. And she's fully expecting, I think, the coworker to end their time together, go back to work. And the coworker picks up her phone, cancels a meeting and, just dives right into her world and starts to ask her, you know, um, how do you feel now that you've told me? And I think I have it written down. She just said like an elephant's taken one of its feet off of my chest. And that's where I lost it. That sums it up. Just that scene. And so I think TV shows are starting to get it right because if someone with bipolar 2 disorder can watch it and say, I am right there with you in every emotion, then I think that's amazing that that can give a glimpse to anyone out there watching that has no understanding of the disorder, just the emotions and the fear. And then also the beautiful reaction of her coworker at lunch to just say, thank you so much for sharing. That makes so much makes sense to me and it gives me such a better understanding and I think that's where we as people living with mental illness see the power in us taking that step opening up as scary as it might be and letting people into our world to give them a better understanding of how we're wired and it's just this beautiful domino effect (laughs) yeah well and I think you're exactly right it didn't just portray um you know, the mental health disorder in, in a very full yeah. light, like all, all, all of it, um, in every like facet and showing us her, you know, her, um, in and outs and up and downs, but it also displayed to the world, a beautiful way to respond because that is the other thing that ha- doesn't have good representation yeah. people. Yeah. And a lot of these emotions are valid, but people, you see people's fear you see people's judgment, you see as a person living with it. And that's what we see on TV, television as well, or people pull back to show some would to show someone doing exactly what would mean a lot to someone, like leaning in, despite her discomfort, um, saying, thank you for telling, acknowledging how hard it is because even Julie and I were having a conversation before about how um, we come on here and we tell the whole world, like mm-hmm. we're here. Hello. But when it's close, right. When it's my daughter's teacher or it's, you, you know, it, I brace myself if it comes up in conversation or whatever, if they don't already know me. Right. And that's me stigmatizing myself. I feel like they have to know and see that I'm quote unquote stable and then see, because again, you know, it's this awful feeling that we feel like we have to represent, yeah. um, bipolar in a great light because it's been so damaging yeah in, uh in media but yeah like didn't you like you said like julie has watched just that part and it has touched her so deeply because i'm not to put words in your mouth but i'm assuming that that is how you would hope that someone yeah. would talk to you yep yeah. yep yeah, absolutely i should probably watch the whole thing <laughs> oh you're gonna love it with my kleenex in hand but i think oh. So it's it's, just an episode. So each one is a separate episode. So, um, so the one that we're talking, Julie said the title, we'll put that in the notes because everyone has a different characters, but that one specifically. Yeah. No, that was, that was a wow for me. So, so I think, I mean, looking back over the 10 years, I, I see how damaging 
the media could be with certain portrayals. And now I think I see, I have hope and I see that there's an effort being made. And I also know that mental health is being talked about a lot more. There's more awareness. So I hope that us as consumers of media can also come to whatever we're seeing. And, you know, maybe even me now watching that interview, if it were aired today of Charlie Sheen, I would be able to say, see the bigger picture and know, you know, that what's going on behind the scenes. So yeah, I'm and hopeful. I think, mm -hmm. And I think too, I think like we're talking a lot about it, which is awesome. And I mean, in some places we're talking about even more because we're in a lot of spaces where it's normalized, but um, I think we need to also have action, right? And we're seeing yeah. movement in terms of action and representation, right? We need to not just talk about the things like everyone can talk about taking a mental health day, but we're too scared to say it, right? So moving towards that and showing yeah. that on um on television and in the media julie what would be your out of all the things we talked about what would be the, your two um hopes that the media would do moving forward like what Ooh. um i would just hope that the media would i don't know i guess put checks and balances in place that there would be people say, you know, for those people they're interviewing for someone to step in and say, this isn't right, or, you know, let's not air this. So I don't know, checks and balances yeah. in place before something is aired for the whole world and that they would just understand that you can't take it back. You can't unair. There was a meme, uh, something that sheen can't be unsheen. And I mean, it's not funny at all, but it couldn't be more true when it comes to this interview. I mean, yeah. to think that his his kids are going to see that one day. So I guess just more accountability on uh, the part of the media as far as what they're putting out. And then I think um, when it comes to the paparazzi and demand for these photos, um, I would just hope that we realize when we pick up, you know, some of those magazines that have those photos that we're a part of that problem. So if we don't if we don't give them a way to make money, they can't make money. There's less demand for those photos. And just, I guess that people would have more compassion for the human side of things and I start to see the family and the person and the human struggle that is behind the behavior. But yeah, that, those are my two, was it two I was supposed to yes. get? No, you did it. And I love the way you did a big one and a personal one, because I think to another um, important thing is to educate yourself, especially if you have a loved one or someone you know, because yeah. in the moments, um, it, it isn't always easy to put that on the person with mental health, right? Yeah. If you're close to me, um, or because I put myself out there, 100% ask me what, um, what you think about what I think about these things, because I'm open, but not everybody is is open to to sharing or in a good place to share. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said about seeing, um, seeing the human. And I think mm -hmm. that we, yeah, we need to demand it too for, yeah. for other people. And um, one of the things that, like I said, like you said, seeing, seeing people's humanity and look to other parts of the, of the story, right? Yeah. Look for other parts of the story. And, uh, you know, we need, people to stick up for us or teach people about us as well not just us because it's exhausting yeah. like we have vulnerability hangovers every time we do an episode we want to be here and we do this but uh it, it it's it it is hard work and I think yeah like you said supply and demand right um make sure that you're you know you you're searching for a balanced perspective and then we can yeah. keep, keep showing this and then um all of it goes down to um, perpet like getting rid of the stigma so that people can get help and yeah. they won't get to that point on the media because they've been able to come forward because they don't carry the stigma, the elephant foot, right? Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And the, and the shame. And so we hope that, um, you know, that you're, we were able to give you uh, our perspective and just a few thoughts on what's going on. We always love to hear yours. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just go out there and watch balance things and learn about all, all of who we are as people. And um, yeah, we're glad you joined us. This is Bipolar.
This is bipolar. <laughs>